I'm very pleased to be able to speak to you today. I believe that what I have to say is timely. I hope it demolishes some myths, and I think it will be welcome. Let me begin by thanking you and ISC for the very helpful responses that you provided to the consultation on the general public benefit guidance. These responses were of tangible help in ensuring that the final general guidance was as considered and meaningful as possible. And I would like to personally thank Jonathan for publicly applauding the fact that we engaged in genuine consultation which brought about these changes. The first overarching principle is that charities' purposes, their aims if you like, must provide an identifiable benefit or benefits. It must be clear what they are, but they don't have to be capable of being measured or quantified. So how, for example, to measure the uh, benefit that a victim of abuse receives from counselling, or an individual from seeing a beautifully preserved landscape. Impossible to measure the benefits here, but quite straightforward to identify and describe them. And these benefits must be related to the charity's aims. I think this is an area potentially ripe for misunderstanding. If you're set up under the charitable purpose of advancing education, then the public benefit you provide can be taken into account only against that purpose. The fact that you lend your playing fields to local adult sports clubs is praiseworthy and is to be welcomed by local sports enthusiasts. But that activity is not related to your stated aims and cannot be taken into account as evidence of the public benefit you provide. However, lending your playing fields to children would count because you are educating children and physical education is part of general education. <coughs> 